Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be working on how to um, write the names of a given compound formula. So I'm going to give you the formula like H2O and you'll have to be able to name that compound. So just a quick review. These red ones over here are metals. The blue ones are non-metals. In order to have an ionic compound, which is what we're working on, you have to be a mixture of a red and a blue. We need to make these purple compounds. So we're gonna start off a couple of things that I suggest you have, your periodic table. I suggest you have your common ions and their charges sheet because you're gonna need that as well. Um, a quick reminder, these cats right here, remember these right here, these are always a plus one. Those are always a plus two. These are always a plus three. And these in here, remember, these were transitional. These are all transitional metals right here, those, which means they can have any charge within the reasons of their charges, all right? For example, we had talked before, these, whoops, these are the transitionals in here. Iron can have a charge. Iron can be a three plus charge. Iron can be a two plus charge. And iron can be a six plus charge. And we worked with that last time. <clears throat> But today, what we're going to do, instead of writing the formula, we're going to try to write the name. All right. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's scroll on down. Let's take a look. So before we start, what I want to do is let's work on what the charges are. Now, I don't have the charges written up here anymore because you're going to have to be able to do this on your own. So my first question is, what, ladies and gentlemen, is the charge on an oxide ion. Good, ladies and gentlemen, the charge on an oxide ion, which is right here, is gonna be a negative two. This is a zero charge. This would be a negative one. This is a negative two. So we'd write that as O2 minus, ladies and gentlemen. So oxide would be O2 minus. Let's move on. What's the charge? on a nitride ion? Good question. That's right, nitride is right over here. Nitride is gonna have a charge of three minus, all right? What is the charge, ladies and gentlemen, on a carbonate ion? What is the charge on a carbonate ion? All right, in order to find the carbonate ion, ladies and gentlemen, what you need to do, you need to take out your common ions sheet and their charges, and you need to go find carbonate. And if we take a look, we can see that carbonate is right here. Carbonate has, whoops, that wasn't a very good circle. Carbonate has, ladies and gentlemen, a charge of minus two. So the charge on carbonate would be CO3, two minus. Let's take a look at the next one. What is the charge on a sulfate ion? Sulfate ion. Well, good. Again, you're gonna to need to have this document here and we're gonna to have to go and find sulfate. And whoops, there it is right in the middle of the circle. You can see that the charge on sulfate, or the formula for that matter, is SO4, two minus. So the charge would be a two minus on that one. Let's do the next one. What's the charge on phosphate, ladies and gentlemen? What is the charge, whoops, on phosphate? Good, phosphate, we can see it right here. It's gonna have a three minus charge. It's a PO4, three minus, which means there's a three minus charge on that sideways looking phosphate. But let me write it like that. So it's a little bit more straight up and down for you. All right, that was a pretty good review. I think that was it. I don't think there's any more. Excellent. So let's move on down. A quick review of Roman numerals. This is one, two, three, four. This one here is five. Right here we have five. And this one's four because it's four minus one. Then we have six, seven, eight. This one's 10, 
10 minus 1 equals 9, ladies and gentlemen. 10 minus 1 equals 9. So before we can go on and work on this next stuff, we have to figure out how to determine how much things cost. There's going to be some division, some upper level math that we're going to be using. So you're going to get your calculators out or use those math skills that you learned way back in the day when you learned division. So this first one says you have three oranges and they cost $6. So the three oranges cost $6. But the question is, how much is each orange? Well, in order to do that, you would say, well, we need to find out the total cost of these oranges. We would divide three oranges into $6 in theory, but I don't wanna to get too crazy with the math. But you could sit there and say, well, to get $6, each one of these must be $2 each. That's two, four, and six. So one orange equals $2, all right? You're gonna to have to know how to do that. The next question is another one, it's very similar. We're gonna talk about apples. So in this first one, we had, let me put that back so you can see it. In the first one, ladies and gentlemen, we had three oranges cost $6. Now we have different pieces of fruit. Now we have two apples cost $6. Now, we still have a cost of $6, but now we only have two pieces of fruit. So how much would each apple cost? In theory, you would take six divided by the two apples, which is two or, or which is three, or you would just say, oh, three plus three equals six, three times two equals six. So each apple costs $2, okay? The total cost would be $6. All right, and then let's take a look down here. I don't know if I gave you one more example if I deleted that one. I deleted it. I thought we'd kind of be over it at this point where you'd be like, no, Mr. P, we, we, get, we, we, we know how to do a little simple math like that. But now let us move on, ladies and gentlemen. This one, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated, but exactly the same as the orange situation. But the complicated part, instead of talking about oranges, we're gonna be talking about iron. All right, so let's take a gander. You, whoops, you have two iron atoms and they total a charge of plus six. How much is each worth? Well, in this situation, we're gonna say that two iron atoms equals $6. So how much would each iron be? Well, each iron would have to be a plus three charge. So each one of these irons would be three plus, and I could put a little, if I had that tiny little perfect pencil that costs thousands of dollars, I could use that, but I don't. I have the teacher version. So now, what will be an example of that? Well, if we take a look, an example of that, these two irons are each worth a plus three each. Mr. P, how do you know? Well, the way that you know that is not the best line ever. The way that you know, nope. All right, kids, this is it. Win or lose. Sweet. The way that you know that the iron here, there's two of them. And the reason that we know they're worth a three plus each is because we have two irons. We have an Fe and an Fe because it means there's two of them. But we don't know what the charge is. Why don't we? because iron is a transitional metal. Iron is in this transitional zone here where we don't know what the charge is. Well, then how can we figure anything out if we don't know the charge? Well, that's where the non-metal comes in because we do know the charge on the oxygen. Fluorine's a minus one, oxygen's a minus two, nitrogen's a minus three, et cetera. And I have three oxygens, one, two, three, and each one of those oxygens are worth a two minus charge, which gives us a total of minus six on this side, which means when we learned before, we had to cancel out to equal zero. That means that this side must be plus six. Well, the oxygen side was a minus six and there were three oxygens, each oxygen being a minus two, minus two, minus four, minus six, ding. -ding. But on this side over here, we have two irons. Now, each iron has to be worth a certain amount. The total is six, which means each my iron must be worth 
three plus. So that means that we have an iron three atom. So the name of this compound, you would, as you would write, would be, you would say, we have iron oxide, but there's a problem. Which iron are we talking about? Remember, it can be a two plus, a three plus, or a six plus. So we have to say, ah, oh, we're talking about the iron that has the three plus charge. So we have to say iron three oxide, which is the opposite of what we learned last time. So I'm gonna go through this process again. Hopefully that was just not a jumbled mess of icky lecture. Let's try this one on, this next one, all right? Let's slide her down, all right? So what do we have here? In this example, we have two, uh, oh, I canceled this example. No, I didn't, I left it here. We have two iron atoms that have a charge of plus four. How much would each iron be worth? Answer that question, please. Good, it was worth plus two because if, sorry, I don't need to do that right now. If the irons total a plus four, that means that we're working with iron two, iron two. And the reason we're working with iron two is because there's a charge of plus two. Remember that Roman numeral is the charge on the atom. We worked on that last time as well. So let's scroll on down and take a look at our example. And in our example, we have Fe2, all right, C. Now let's look at our numbers here. This one's worth minus one, that one's worth minus two, that one's worth minus three, and the carbon is gonna be worth minus four when it's a non-metal with a metal. So let's take a look. So then we're gonna have this. Do we know the charge on the iron? Nope, it's transitional. Do we know the charge of the carbon? Yeah, we know the charge on that carbide right there. It's a minus four. Oh boy, me and my straight lines. Let's try this one. There we go. So now let's do a balance beam. I have one carbon on that side. I have two irons on this side. We don't know the charge on the irons yet, but we do know the charge on the carbon. The charge on the carbon is a four minus, which means this compound must balance out has a net charge of zero. So this side must be a four plus. How do you know? Well, if this is a four minus, this one must be a four plus. Each one of these irons are worth how much? Two plus each. So what would we name this? Well, if we're going to, let me just take a look and see if I have it. Otherwise I'll go grab it. I don't have it. Let me go grab it, pause this video. So in this example right here, we are working with a binary compound. The binary compound, right, is right here. There's an iron and a carbon, so that's two things. So yes, it's binary. First thing we do is we name the metal. What's the metal? It's iron. Well, there's a catch, because it says, if the metal is transitional, we need a Roman numeral. So let's take a look. Is iron transitional? Yes. So we need to include in this example that iron is iron two. So the name of this compound would be iron two carbide. It wouldn't just be iron carbide, it would be iron two carbide. We have to, ladies and gentlemen, we have to right here, it says we must include the Roman numeral if we're working with transitional metals. That's big. That's what that is all about right there. You must include the Roman numerals. So let's move on, dot org. All right, let's take a look. Oh, I did another one. Oh, we're not gonna do that one. All right, let's try some just true examples. All right, so let's just come up. We're gonna work some examples out and uh, let's get out of here. So we're gonna try and name these compounds. So first things first, okay? We're gonna go to this handout here. First things first. Do we like the color? No, let's work with red. All right, first thing. Let's name this thing. This is, it. This is what the naming is right here. Okay, let's name it. Whoops. Is it binary? Are we working with just two compounds? 
Yes. Mr. P, but there's three chlorines. Remember we talked last video that it's total number of types of elements, okay? So binary compound, yes. Name the metal. The metal's iron. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna write iron right here. The metal is iron. But is the metal transitional? Oh, well, let's take a look. Is the metal transitional? Yep, iron is transitional. There it is. We need a Roman numeral. We don't know what it is. Remember, iron can be plus two, plus three, or plus six. And you don't even have to have that memorized, but you will because I say it so often. All right, so let's go on back and let's figure out what we can do here. All right, so we need to name the Roman numeral. So which iron are we working with? Well, we need to find out. So let's draw this thing out. So we have one Fe, and I'm gonna change this to blue because it's a non-metal, and we have three chlorines or three chlorides. Now the question is, what's the charge, ladies and gentlemen, on a chloride? What's the charge on a chloride? Whoa, where did my, uh... what's the charge on chloride? Well, remember, chloride's in the minus one column. There's probably so much going on, I know. So each chloride has a minus one charge. So what's the total charge over here? Total charge is minus three. And remember, these things need to cancel out in the middle. So what must be the charge on the iron? Well, the iron side must be a plus three. How many irons do we have? Just one, which means that that iron must be a three plus. So the name of this is gonna be iron three. And then once we do that, now we have to name the non-metal and end it with I. Iron three chloride, okay? Let's move on. Let's do the next example. What? FeCl2, that's crazy. That's all right, let's give it a shot, huh? FeCl2, how far down can I go? Right there, perfect, because then my other one's right there. So let's, let's figure it out. First thing we do, all right, let's see if we got this. First thing we do, ladies and gentlemen, is what? First thing we do, we wanna name this compound. What do we do? We find out, is the compound binary? Let's see, there's one F and CL. One, two, bi means two, yes, it's binary. First thing we do, name the metal. Okay, the metal is named iron. Is the metal transitional? I don't remember. Let's go up and look. Is iron transitional? Yes, iron is transitional. It's in the transitional area. We don't know what the charge is. So let's find out. So we have to make a balance beam. There's one iron on this side right here. And then we have, let's change the color to blue because we're working with our non-metal. We have our chloride, still a negative one charge. So there's our Cl minus Cl minus. Are we working with iron three like we did last time? Let's find out. This totals a minus two, which means this side over here must be a plus two. So that iron, since there's only one, must be a plus two charge. So this is gonna be iron two. And then we name the non-metal end in I, chloride, okay? So the game here is trying to figure out what is the charge on that transitional metal. Let's take a look at the next one. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine what this one's gonna be. But we have iron and six chlorines. So let's take a look. We draw our little line. We have one Fe. Oh boy, this is a big one. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six chlorides. What's the total charge on all the chlorides? That's right, the total charge is gonna be minus six. How many irons do we have? Well, we only have one iron and the irons must total a positive six, so six and a six cancels out. So how much of that six plus does this iron have? It gets all of it. 
So what's the name of this one? We'll call this one iron six chloride. What's the difference between these? One of them kills us. One of them is just gonna be hanging out. It's gonna be in the food we eat and everything else. Some of these makes a big difference. You can't just ask me for iron chloride. I have a bunch more examples for you. Let's try this next one. Okay, let me try this next one here. So here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at this next one. That's a chromium. And then, ooh, what's that guy there? What's a CO3? Hmm, I don't even know. But first things first, let's take a look. Where's chromium? Here's chromium right in the middle of the transitionals, which means we're gonna need a Roman numeral. So we need to name this thing. We know it's gonna be called chromium, some Roman numeral, and then whatever that CO3 thing is. So first things first, let's find out what that CO3 thing is. Where do we look, ladies and gentlemen? That's right, we're gonna come look over here. So here we go. What do we got? There's the CO3, two minus, or it's a CO3. Okay, that's the charge on it. And we know that the charge is a two minus and it's called carbonate. All of that's important information. So what do we need to do? Well, we know the charge on the carbonate. What's the charge on the carbonate? The charge is two minus. That's gonna help us find out what the charge is on the chromium. So we're gonna draw our little balance beam Go pick up our blue and we have CO3 2 minus, CO3 2 minus, and CO3 2 minus. We have three of these CO2s. Each one, I'll change the color, each one with a 2 minus charge. What's the total charge, ladies and gentlemen? What's the total charge of the carbonates? That's right, it's a minus six. What must be the charge, ladies and gentlemen, in order for this to come out to zero in the middle, what must be the charge of the other side? That's right. It's gotta be a plus six. And what's gonna make up the plus six? Well, we have two chromiums. We have one chromium here, another chromium here. Now the question is, what's the charge on each one of those chromiums? Two chromiums have to total plus six. So how much would each chromium have to be to equal a total of a plus six? That's right, each one has to be a plus three. And we now know the charge of the chromiums, so now we know the name. What do we do first? Well, the rule says, name the metal. Wait, are we working with a binary one in this case? Are we working with a binary? No, so in this one, we just have to name the metal, figure out what the number is, the Roman numeral, and then name the polyatomic ion. So what's the name of the metal? Let's find out. The name of the metal is chromium. Chromium. And what's the charge? What's the charge? The charge is gonna be a three plus. So it's chromium with a three plus charge. And then what do we do? Write the polyatomic ion carbonate. I think this is the most complicated form it is. The faster you learn that CR is chromium and Fe is iron and nickel, then you don't have to look them up anymore. And then the faster you learn, and I've given you the same ones over and over again, the faster you learn carbonate and phosphate and sulfate, the easier it's going to be for you to look it up over here. So let's try another one, shall we? Let's see what I can do here. Let's see if I can pull it down far enough. I think it's a vanadium or vanadium, I think it's called. Let's take a look, there it is right here. So the last one was chromium three carbonate. So what do we need to do? Next, we're working with V and O2. So let's find the V. There's the V right smack in the middle of those transitionals. So we don't know the charge. Do we know the charge on the oxygen? Oh, that one's a minus one, that's a minus two. Yes, we do. So we need to find out what's the charge on the vanadium. So let's do it. There's our balance beam. We have two oxygens and each oxygen has a two minus charge. 
So the total on this side is a minus four, which means if we're gonna cancel out the numbers, the total on this side must be a plus four because a plus four and a minus four equals zero. Now, what are we working with? We're working with one V. This one V has how much of that plus force charge? That's right, it has all of it. It's gonna be plus four. So when we name this bad boy or girl, this is gonna be called vanadium, vanadium. It's a, a transitional metal, so we have to put down that charge. So the charge is four. The Roman numeral four looks like that. And then the O is ending in ide, oxide, okay? So this one's called vanadium four oxide. Hopefully it's not too messy and you're getting it. I don't know if I gave you more examples. I, I feel like I wanna do more. Oh boy, oh yeah. So now let's get into these. Now, this is just as a quick review, right? So let's name the following. What is that one? Calcium? Is it transitional? Nope. Calcium always has a two plus charge. And then what's the name of this NO3 thing? Well, if we take a look, it's not binary. It must be a polyatomic ion. Where do we look for that? We have to go to this sheet. Dang, Mr. P, we gotta be all over the place. Yep, you gotta kind of keep yourself a little organized, right? So now we have to find out what is the NO3? And, well, we really don't care about the charge, do we? Because we already know the charge on the, on the uh, calcium. So this is called nitrate. I shouldn't have drawn it so large. This one's called nitrate, ladies and gentlemen. So this one's just gonna be called calcium. And since we, we don't need to put a Roman numeral, I do not put a Roman numeral. If you put a two there, to tell me the charge is two, oh, I have to mark it wrong. And it makes me so sad. But this would just be called calcium nitrate. That's it. Let's try the next one on for size, huh? All right, so let's take a look at the next one. All right, hope the video hasn't been going too long. I'll put this one in blue. All right, so let's take a look. We're working with MN, which is manganese, working with P, which is phosphide. Do we know the charge on the manganese? No. Do we know the charge on the phosphide? Yes. What is the charge on the phosphide, please? That's right. The charge is going to be a minus three charge. Now, this one I put in here on purpose to make it super, super complicated. Not complicated, but just to make it more difficult. So let's find out what the charge is going to be on the manganese. Here I have seven phosphides, each phosphide with a three minus charge. So let's get, hey, hold on a second kids. So what are we gonna have? That was my young man, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven phosphides here, seven phosphides, which is gonna give us what total negative charge? That's right, we're gonna have a minus 21 on that side. And now, what are we gonna do? We have to go to the other side and we know that the other side has to make a total of zero. So what's the total number on the other side? It must be a positive 21. How many manganese do I have? I have three, one, two, three. These three manganese are each gonna have what charge that are gonna get us all the way to a positive 21. So each manganese has what charge? That's right, each manganese is gonna be a seven plus charge, which means we're working with manganese seven. So when we write this thing out, let me get rid of this other stuff here, ladies and gentlemen. When we're working with this here, okay? This means we're working with manganese seven. So the name of this, let's go get the name. Let's look at this chart here, all right? So we don't, it, it is binary. So we're gonna be working over here. First thing, yes, we named the metal and we put the Roman numeral. It's called 
manganese, and it's a Roman numeral seven. And then what do we do? We name the non-metal, end it with ide. P is phosphorus, so phosphide, okay? So it's manganese seven phosphide. All right, kids, I have one more example for you, okay? I don't think I'll, I have a bunch more, but whatever, I'll just, I'll just end it on this because I know you're, you're getting there. Although the next one's pretty easy. So this one here, what do we have? We have SC. And where is SC located? SC is located right there. Now remember, this is the plus one column, the plus two column, the plus three column. Is this scandium transitional? No, which means we do not need a Roman numeral because not transitional. So we just have to name this. The SC is scandium, scandium. And then we take a look over here, the PO4. Let's find the PO4. Oh, here it is right here. That was handy. That's called phosphate. So this is gonna be called scandium phosphate. Now, the faster you learn, that PO4 is phosphate and NO3 is nitrate and CO3 is carbonate and SO4 is sulfate, your life's gonna get so much easier because those are really the only ones. Maybe I'll throw an acetate out there every once in a while. So let's take a look at this last one and then I'm out of here for sure. I wanna get going. All right, so first thing first, is this binary? Are we binary? One, two, yes. Name the metal, it's called chromium. Is the metal transitional? Mr. Pedrick, I don't know. Well, let's go look, let's find it. Oh, there's chromium right there. Yeah, it's in the transitional zone. We need to figure out what the charge is. Let's build a balance beam. And we're gonna have, what's the charge on F here? It's a minus one charge. So we have F minus, F minus, F minus. We've got six of them. So the total, whoops, I'm just supposed to be minus. The total charge here, minus six. So what has to be the charge on the other side? That's right. It's got to be a plus six. So plus six and a plus six makes zero. We've got one chromium. How much of that plus six charge does this chromium keep? That's right, the chromium is gonna keep all of it. That's gonna be a chromium six plus because there's only one. So we're gonna call that chromium six fluorine, but it says end with ide flu, oops, it's a U, sorry about that. Fluoride, sweet. I hope I did a good job teaching you. If you're lost and confused, shoot. You need to click that little button that says find my teacher. And I will come and work with you. I worked with another student, or a couple of students last class for about 15, 20 minutes. And they just went, burr, burr, and they went, oh my God, Mr. Pete, that's it. And I was like, yes, that's it. Call me, let me work with you for a few minutes and let me clear up any kind of confusion that you have. I'll try my very best. So hopefully you guys are having a good day and I will uh, talk to you soon. <laughs>